welcome back we are again uh, back for this class that is cognitive and behavioral method at the initial days we started with the general analysis then we, we started with the cognitive task analysis where first we completed hierarchical task analysis and then we completed that uh, allocation of functions right so today we will take up the last component of cognitive task analysis that is the critical decision method okay so let us understand what this method is all about here from this particular terminology critical decision we understand that when we are having a particular system in place the operators are working continuously then what we need to understand that uh, the whole event critically and what are the points critical events are happening and how the operators are taking decision on it right so once we understand the whole procedure impact of that critical decision on the whole process we will be able to understand how to minimize the error or how to minimize the accidents further so first let us understand what this uh, method all about and what are the process or procedure we should take up when we want to do this particular method. So yes it is uh, an approach to cognitive task analysis and this particular method involves you know multiple past events in retrospect retrospection so we once we have a particular event already completed we actually look back okay retrospective guide by some kind of probe questions so the cdm we call it in short form that critical decision method cdm has been used in the elicitation of experts knowledge in diverse domain okay so in many cases we use this particular not only in design not only in industrial management or uh, occupational health or in you know in um, ergonomics field or human factors engineering field so in many uh, diverse field we use it and for applications in you know including system development and instructional design so the cdm research illustrates the short knowledge representation the you know the products that can be arise from cognitive task analysis first is the situation assessment record then timelines and the decision requirements so these are the three major component that we are going to work on so cdm actually was developed as an extension of the critical incident technique this is also very old technique however there was a requirement to do some specific modification and then only this cdm has been evolved okay so cdm uses uh, the depth inter in depth interviews to gather retrospective accounts for challenging incidents here it is very important that you know uh, it's not for every event or it's not for every um, activities we do critical decision method wherever it is very challenging in nature okay it's very critically complicated okay it's very very important then only we we go for this cdm method it's very interesting it is a semi structured interviewing technique okay it's not that we we completely rely on the um, structured interview over here it's a kind of semi structured interview uh, that we conduct for investigating the phenomena that rely on subtle cues knowledge goals what are the expectations are there that and the expert strategies that is very very important so we take up some kind of not unstructured semi structured interviews to all these type of stakeholders okay mainly the operators cdm also shows how one can approach methodological issues surrounding the cognitive task analysis including questions about the data quality and method reliability efficiency and utility okay so cdm 
utilizes cognitive probes very important over here that you know it is some kind of probes that we try to use in semi structured uh, interview to elicit the information about how experts formulate their decision making strategies. So, here majorly we will be looking for the strategies ok decision making strategies when there is an critical incidence whatever the critical incidences are there we are going to look back the steps to the process whole 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 points in detail and then we will be discussing what are the critical decision making strategies has been followed by the experts so cdm is used to generate knowledge for the development of expert system develop training materials and identify requirements, determine the effect of expert system on task performance. So, these are the things normally CDM use for their data. So, let us understand the procedure in detail. So, CDM does not use any strict protocol of interviewing questions ok as I mentioned earlier it is a kind of semi structure. So, it is a structured by a set of interview phases or you know sweeps, small small components will be there that I, I will tell you in the next slide that examine the incident in successively generate you know greater detail. So, what happens when we have a point, when we, when we have small small probes, we try to gather information you know in the surrounding areas ok. So, that that is the way how do we collect data for CDM. So, a typical CDM session requires approximately 2 hours to move through each of 4 interview sweeps. Normally, there are 4 sweeps that I am going to tell in the next. So, it is like that kind of time consumption. So, it is a huge involvement ok. So, it is not that easy task, it is it is require lot of training first of all, it requires lot of time and it need, uh, needs expertise ok. So, that is why critical decision method is very important in, in those cases where you know we are actually going to uh, start or we, we are going to design a very new system taking influence from the old similar system and we try to get information the you know uh, what were the drawbacks of those system and we try to uh, improve upon it ok. So, their critical decision method help us to improvise the whole system. So, these are the major four steps. So, first identification of a complex potential incident to elicit you know uh, the discoveries about the cognitive phenomena. So, what are the it is not uh, when there is a system it is not only the you know uh, cognitive right. So, there are many other components or partially physical components also involved. So, we really need to understand what are the cognitive phenomena are present in the whole system. In the second step what we do that create a detailed incident timeline. So, when we are talking about decision making or critical decision method right. So, in that case where there is an incident and we try to understand uh, step 1 what, what happened, in second what happened, third what happened. So, on a timeline we actually detail out the incident incidents. So, different incidences what we try to do put it in a particular timeline and which shows the sequence of event. So, once we have the sequence of event in a particular method we really know that where the problem started. So, at the end definitely suppose there is an error or there is an accident. However, it must have not started at the initial stage or it must have not started at the very end stage, somewhere it must, must have started. So, we try to do through this method, we try to put all these events you know uh, one by one in a particular timeline and once we 
understand the timeline and we compare it with the standard then we understand where the problem started. So, the, here it is very very important to detail out the incident on a particular timeline. Once this particular stage is over in the next stage what we do that we try to find out the whatever the strategies has been taken for managing those decision points which are already embedded in that particular timeline. So, if there is an error, so to overcome that error what are the decisions has been taken, what are the strategies has been you know, formulated, how they have tried to, how the operators or the involved manpower has tried to you know, discuss this or try to uh, control it. So, this particular um, strategies we need to find out. Of course, it is again retrospective, right. So, here once it is done uh, some something happened, then only we go back and try to understand those things. In the last stage what we do is the probe with what if queries. So, we try to um, you know inquire with the stakeholders ok that what if it happened, what if this happened, that happened something like that. So, probe with uh, what if queries to elicit potential expert and novice differences. We try to understand that, we try to find out. So, once we know what are the type of people were in, involved in that particular situation and how these things happen, then we will come to know that what is the difference between the experts opinion and the you know newcomers. So, then we will understand where the training is required, where the you know uh, in uh, design interventions are required. So, through all these four steps we actually try to get information where the uh, failure in a particular uh, process or system and how critically someone can analyze it, how critically the decision could have taken or how the design intervention can help them to take such decision ok. So, these are the steps. Now, definitely it is a very important uh, tool and it has lot of advantages. Of course, there are disadvantages I am going to tell them. However, it has lot of advantages. So, very first advantage is elicitation of real incidents incident. So, what exactly it says? So, you know capturing the incidents within an ex uh, experts experience that require complex cognitive behavior and thought allows the researcher to identify the influences and strategies. Influences and strategies that might not be included in the very realistic task simulation. Although we have lot of task simulator like suppose I am talking about um, air traffic control. So, we have pilot simulator right there are it is a very sophisticated in nature. However, after getting training after getting all these advantage you know all these type of uh, technologies are available still there are accidents right. So, when we try to understand those accidents how do we do we try to analyze the real incident it is not that we do not do in the simulation. So, in simulator we do definitely do all those things in a realistic manner. However, real incident are definitely different than the simulation right. So, what it does? So, it capture those incidences within an experts experience that requires complex cognitive behavior very important ok complex cognitive behavior and uh, you know what you need to do is the thought allows the researcher to identify those influences and strategies. So, influences and strategies that might not be included in even any realistic task simulation. So, which is not possible in this task simulator those type of thing we can really analyze in through this particular method. Next is in depth interactive structure. 
So, the four sweep structure that we discussed already allows for an interactive approach to data collection. So, when there is iteration, so what happened that you know there are uh, more number of informations are coming. So, as long we have an option to iterate that then you know always it is better that we have more options and we, tr we, can, we can have the comparison and we can choose best among them. So, that is why this particular method help you to get more variety. So, in the final sweep the interview can depend on the issues that surface uh, no, during the initial detailing. Maybe in the initial phase it was uh, not in detail. However, in the next last stage okay, what we can do we can go into detail and we can have more clarification or better clarification. So, that whenever you are redesigning the whole thing you can avoid those elements uh, you know, disturbing elements. Efficiency, the use of critical incident is highly efficient means of cognitive task analysis. It has been proved in different literature. Subtle aspects of expertise are brought into play along with the routine aspect of performance that serve as a background. So, you know uh, when you have more variety, so it is not only uh, same thing, routine thing that you are actually doing. So, you are actually analyzing those critical decisions. Okay? So, inform the cognitive probes. The cognitive probes and what if queries that we do used in sweep 3 and 4 of CDM have been utilized for you know years and many years. So, actually we are practicing it and deemed to be beautiful in research and development environment to capture the whole process. Okay? So, if that happen then what will go? If this happen then what will go? How do you take care of this decision? So, these types of probing questions, these types of uh, you know, uh, um, queries ac from the experts actually help to improve the whole system. So, then you can develop more number of designs to give better solution to that particular situation. However, there are disadvantages as I mentioned initially. First, I say it is very uncertain in terms of reliability. There are reasons right when we are talking about uncertainty of reliability why because CDM methodology elicit the retrospective incidents. Okay. So, based on a particular variety we are actually trying to develop something new. So, it may not happen that exactly similar thing happen in the new process right. So, it is always there is a chance that we uh, the same repeat will not be there right. So, what happens that it concerns with the data reliability and have been raised due to the evidence of memory degradation over time because you know if it is a fresh incident uh, the, the stakeholders can give better information whereas if it is not there may be a lapse of information. Okay. Then uh, it is very much resource intensive. Okay, you understand that you know you need to really collaborate with the all varieties of stakeholders or the operators who were uh, associated with that particular event and the data is very small because you know you cannot have large set of database because one incident one data it is like that. So, the CDM interviews are more demanding than the traditional survey and structured interview as we mentioned and uh, these uh, you know cost appear to be more than balanced however, by the richness of the data obtained from each interview can somewhere save it okay? because if there is a critical event and if we understand that really in terms of uh, correct way then that information is definitely going to give you a very rich data 
which will help you to develop a good system further. However, the whole process will take lot of time, lot of resource, you know, involvement of lot of resources and money. The next is the sophisticated methodologies which requires training. So, utilizing the CDM methodology uh, requires a high level of expertise and training and effective use of CDM also requires knowledge of cognitive process or phenomena being investigated. So, you really need uh, a skill and experience. So, let us understand what are the connected method and how do we actually take help from each other to conduct these uh, the whole process. So, mainly I will say within method adaptation and cross method adaptation. I will describe them uh, in detail and within method we have two majorly variation of timeline uses because you know once we have specific timeline how do we change the timeline how do we uh, uh, change the decision making and second is the adaptive of the cognitive probes. In the second component that is the cross method adaptation, we mainly have the post observation CDM and additional cross method critical decision method adaptation. Okay. So, under the second we have knowledge audit CDM like in combination simulation based method and CDM and queued recall technique plus CDM. Okay. So, let us understand uh, all those things in little detail. So, this is just uh, the representation in uh, sentences that uh, within method and cross method adaptation. So, within method it says the modify the way of interview conduction in cross method synthesize the CDM in other related method. So, let us go into detail about the within method. So, what it says that it is several uh, adaptation of the traditional CDM. Okay. So, uh, traditionally how do we do from that it is adaptation. However, it is not that exactly same. So, adaptation of four traditional sweeps. So, that we discuss 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, we are act not following exactly but it is an some kind of adaptation. There are two sets of notable within method variation. So, one is the variation in the uh, timeline uses and the second is the adaptation of CDM of cognitive probes. So, first one which is related to timeline uses. So, what we actually do over here? So, we establishing an incident timeline remains a significant uh, significant sweep within the CDM methodology in specific order. Okay. So, when there is a specific order from that order what we do to we, we try to understand the sequence of event and also we try to establish the critical decision point that will be focused upon the subsequent sweep. Okay. This we do in the variation of uh, time uses. Okay. So, this variation of time uses will give you some more variety. Okay. So, if this particular incident is happening this time or if it happens in this time that how the whole process will change, how the whole sequence will change. Okay, where the decision strategies will change. So, this will help you to make more, more iteratives, more alternate you know, design. Okay. Uh, adaptation of cognitive probes, what it does? A set of cognitive probes that is effective for successfully you know, focusing on the critical incident and these probe elicit information about situation assessment situational cues, then expert strategies. Here it is very important when you are talking about expert set strategy. So, when we are actually doing it, now you, you inquire with the novice people who are not really experienced in that field and then you uh, get idea from the expert 
expert people. Now you really understand what are the basic differences are coming and can your design, can your intervention you know, make up these differences. So it is very important and then goals of incident players and the critical decision and judgment okay that we do in the cognitive probes whereas in the uh, cross method adaptation there are two set of cross method adaptation one is uh, you know post observation cdm so once you complete your cdm you do some kind of uh, you know afterwards that observation and what you actually gaining out of it and the second is the additional cross method critical decision method adaptation that is also possible. So in uh, post observation CDM what is exactly we do? In depth interview you can conduct uh, immediately following an observed event. So, you just observed an event and immediately after that you start following up with the interview. In this type of event it has to be observed that incident and the decision making during that particular incident and of course you can use again the timeline and you can, uh, you can check what is the kind of required time for that and then you can compare it ok. So, this way uh, we use uh, CDM and I suggest that we could not take up any uh, no example for this particular uh, method because I was not having any uh, data with me to represent. So, you can practice taking up any particular event and then maybe we can uh, if you have any query we can discuss it. Okay, thank you.